Well, hello, I am Corvette Hop, and welcome to the channel. If this is a first time visiting the channel, then please go ahead and subscribe. Today, we're going to work on this 2014 C7 Corvette. We're going to remove and install a new nav screen. I've been having some problems with the nav screen going on and off and flickering back and forth. Today, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. With that, let's go ahead and get started, and hey, keep those cars on the road. Let me go ahead and show you first some of the problems that I'm experiencing screen would start flashing, lines going through it, and sometimes even black out. Now this video does not show how to remove the dash in the center console. Those are on other videos. For your convenience, I will list those links. Because one of the main wires came loose at the terminal board, I'm going to go ahead and replace the entire nav screen. Next, let's go ahead and remove the negative battery terminal from the battery using a 10 millimeter socket. Now this should have already been done if you watched the dash removal and center console removal. However, safety first. Do not close your passenger door or the trunk or you will not be able to open them up with the battery disconnected unless you use your manual key. We're going to go ahead and remove six screws. One, two, three, four, five, and six and we'll remove those using a seven millimeter socket. Once again, the console and dash need to be removed to get at this point. The links for both of those will be provided in the comments. It is next to impossible to get at these last two screws unless the center console is removed. Now that the screws are removed, let's partially pull out the nav display. Once we pull it loose, we still have three wire connectors that need to be removed. The first one is the USB connection, which is right in the back in the top portion of the display. This is a rear view of the nav screen showing through the front windshield inward. USB connector removed. Same USB connector, but a different view. Both the tabs on top and on the bottom. Here's a close-up view of the USB connector. You'll see these two tabs, one, one right here and one here in the back. Both of these have to be pushed out in order to release them. Next, let's go ahead and remove the main nav screen wire connector. This connector is located on the left bottom side of the nav screen. There is a tab on the bottom side of this wire connector that needs to be pushed inward in order to move this wire connector. And the release for it is right here. And there's a little tab right here that you push in and then you can release it. You can't see it because it's on the bottom, uh, but here it is. Push in and then pull out. And lastly, the USB mini main screen wire connector. That's good. Once all three wire connectors are removed, you can go ahead and remove the entire nav screen unit. As I'm pulling this out, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. My goal is to provide detailed procedures and great video coupled with audio for you, the Corvette friend, without wasting your time. And this is what the nav screen wire and harness looks like once everything is removed. Once the monitor was out, I was able to troubleshoot it and determine why it was malfunctioning. At first, I was just going to replace the mini USB line. Once I determined it was broken or that mini USB line meets on the terminal board, I knew that that was not possible. Let me show you what I mean. When I pulled the mini USB line out, the entire connection came off, including the part that is normally connected to the terminal board. This is what that connection looks like. This is the female portion that is normally permanently affixed to the terminal board. My guess is that as I was operating the monitor, it was kind of just dangling and touching contacts at times and then not touching at other times, causing the screen to flicker or go off and on. Here I am pulling it off and show you how it was connected. This is what it looks like totally removed. Clearly, a new monitor is needed. This is the new nav screen display that has arrived. 
Note the part number on the back of the monitor. We'll go ahead and start installing the nav screen display. One of the first things we'll need to do is install those terminal wires. It doesn't matter which one of the three wire connections you want to install first. I went ahead and started with the main display wire connection. Next I went ahead and connected the mini USB terminal for the display. And lastly, the main USB connection. Go ahead and position the nav display in its original position. Line up the holes for the six screws. The nav display is a little difficult to maneuver because of those wires that are connected in the back. Next, of course, install all six screws. Use a 7mm socket to install those six screws. Once all those screws are installed and tightened, you need to reinstall the dash and center and console. You also need to reconnect the battery. I first install the dash and the center console loosely to do an operational check. This of course is an operational check after everything is fully installed. Note no more lines on the monitor are blacking out. Hey I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something and maybe even saved some money. If you did, go ahead and subscribe. With that, keep those cars on the road.